there, I'm Carrie Lawless and we are Designaholics. On today's Designaholic DIY, we are gonna take these six totally mismatched pieces and with chalk paint, we're gonna totally transform them, pull it all together, stay with us, we're gonna show you how it's done. Hey, before we get started, I just wanted to remind you to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. In addition, like and make sure to comment on this video. You wanna know why? We're gonna send you this amazing t-shirt designaholic t-shirt as modeled by the lovely ladies behind me look at this thing exclusive you really want this t-shirt make sure to comment also make sure to subscribe hopefully we'll choose you We're about to split up into groups. Natalia and I have a project going on in the other room that we're gonna show you later, but for now, Kayla and Maddie are getting started prepping with our favorite, Cred Cutter. Cred Cutter. Cred Cutter is amazing, we love it. We're gonna have a link in the description for you because it takes the shine off of furniture and the grease and any kind of dirt, so we're gonna get started prepping right now. <laughs> So what we're doing here is we're prepping the surface with crud cutter. Crud cutter. We're really gonna saturate it. Um, we're gonna leave it on about 15 minutes or longer. Um, and then when we're done, we're really gonna deep clean it with some water and paper towels. So stay tuned. cutter off several times and now we're ready to get started all right now we've been practicing um this is what we had so practice on whatever you have so this is the paper plate that we used look started here really ugly got better so <laughs> before after all right so this is actually the section that we like this got a little too purple but we're gonna finish it off with the white and we're gonna do something in between all this so um, definitely experimentation time the paints that we're using are folk art uh, chalk paint we're using three colors castle and Java are what we're starting with that's why we got a little too purple on this side a little too much Java so we're gonna try to match this as well as possible and then we're gonna go over it um, on uh, with the what is that sheepskin and um, it actually turns out much more white than what it looks and we are trying to get something similar to what's behind us we're gonna finish it off with some clear wax and then some dark wax so we have a few steps so water is key in this because you want to uh, be able to spread it and thin it down all right so we're gonna start with this here's our castle needing a little bit more brown so the problem was this was just a little too cool we're just warming it up now the, this java tends to want to turn purple so we don't want to add too much we just need to warm it to where it's like a warm taupe so if you want to spread it out a little more you just go the opposite direction i'm because this is wood i'm just going in the direction of the grain all right, we're gonna let this dry and figure out if we got the right color. We are so impatient. Maddie's holding the fan. I can't watch paint dry. All right, so we still don't know what's going on. And because Natalia is so impatient, she keeps painting. So give us a minute and uh, or another minute and then we're gonna let you know if we like the color. God, we're so impatient. We're done watching paint dry. Um, we're pretty close, like, you know, actually it's really close to that. We may lighten it up just a little bit and uh, let's get started. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put the first color on here and then while it's really wet, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of brown. What's tough about this when you're trying to make a custom color is um, it dries so much darker than when it goes on. So you have to kind of just 
I don't know, get a feel for how much to add in because it's going to look totally different when it dries. But um, the good news is you can always adjust. Natalia had to leave. We're so sad, but everybody tell Natalia bye. Bye! <laughs> On to the next step. All right, so we've got it pretty much how we want it, and we are testing again. Folk art sheepskin is what's in here. I've got my little water down here. I'm gonna start out with my brush kind of wet. All right, and then I'm just gonna dip into this. Not very much though. Now look, you want to tap off because you don't want a big glob. That will totally just land in a big glob on your paint job. So let's see. Okay, the first stroke I make, I'm going to be really light handed. I'm going to barely glaze over the top. And even though that looks solid, it's not because it's very wet and it's going to dry. Very uh, translucent. A little more water only. Let's see what happens with this. Barely touching the top. A little more water. You want it to be heavier in some places and not so much in others. And then we've got a couple of steps after this, but this the, um, the first coat that we did is going to be the thing that takes the longest. These are much faster because we're adding to, not covering everything. We've gone ahead and applied the clear sealing wax. Sorry, forgot to show that part, but basically we just put this this is from Lowe's, this is Valspar Sealing Wax. It's clear, we put it into a container, we just take a brush and literally just brush it on. Um, actually two coats is better, but for right now, we're gonna go ahead and just accent with this antiquing wax. Now, the reason why I didn't put the antiquing wax on first is because you needed to be able to glide over the surface some. It would not have happened if we had not put the clear wax first because it's very chalky, very porous. So let me show you how we do this. Um, I poured a little bit of the clear wax in here in case I have to make this spread further. So the technique is we are going to apply a little just a teen when I say like just the tips of the brush and then we're gonna like you know get some of it off as much as possible and then maybe dab off onto here just so we don't have a lot going on then I'm going to lightly until I get comfortable with how much is on this brush lightly brush this on that's probably lighter than I want it to go, but it's better to, you know, not have enough and then add in. Then I'm going to take this paper towel and just blend it in. And there we go. That's a much warmer feel and it's much closer to the color that we were trying to get because of this wax. So I'm dabbing it off here so I don't apply too much. Here's another trick. I like to really darken my edges. I think it really ages the finish. See how that just kind of looks really much older when your edges get darker. And then I'm going to come back in and add a little more here. And listen, there's nothing wrong with this look right here. It's more distressed and more rustic. Not the look I'm going for, so I am going to blend it out with this paper towel a little bit. I don't have any issues. So you want long sweeping strokes. Here's the thing too. Make sure it's really important that your strokes are very straight very linear because when you start doing this, which is very natural to do, then it's going to look really unprofessional. If you think about a wood grain is basically going to go straight, you want to kind of follow what a wood grain would do. So, um, so here we go. Let's try it out.
changed up the technique just a little bit. So what I decided was I didn't like the streakiness and I wanted the overall brown color. So I accidentally added a little too much and then liked it. So happy accident. Um, I What I started doing is adding the clear wax, like a greater amount of it, then going into it with the brown and then just kind of toning it. This gave it the overall warmth that I was looking for that mimicked the picture frame uh, a little bit better. Again, we're gonna darken the edges. And then, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this step. Then I decided on that bookcase that uh, Kayla's finishing up, I decided to go ahead and add some black wax to the creases and the edges. So stay with us, I'm gonna show you how we do that. And we're gonna finish it up. you so we are using Debbie's DIY wax we love this so we're probably gonna be switching to her chalk paint shortly but for now I'm just gonna show you how we highlight the different areas or actually these are low lights would maybe low lights yeah 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 we're gonna low light the table <laughs> all right so we're using her black wax um, so we've got we've got it as dark as we want it and then what I'm gonna do is just basically, I'm just gonna do like these edges. So we're just aging it. So we're gonna really concentrate on these edges here. Can you hand me paper towel, please? Yeah. All right, and then I'm just going to, I am dry brushing. So there's literally, there's not very much on this brush and I'm just gonna, again, very lightly touch over it. And it's gonna give it that warmth. And we're gonna use this paper towel just to spread it out. I'm gonna show you because this bookcase behind us, it has a lot more curves and edges. So it's really tough to take a flat piece of wood and do anything interesting to it. Um, it's This works a whole lot better on a piece of furniture that actually has contours and um, pieces of molding that you can accent. So um, this is not gonna be as impressive as the bookcase, but we'll show you that in just one minute. All right, so there you go. Very warm love this wax just giving us that depth and dimension and really and truly I mean this is not a necessary step I just wanted to take it a step further we could have so easily stopped where we were so basically each of these pieces of furniture we did a little bit differently because we didn't want everything to totally match. We have um, our tall round pedestals are much lighter. Um, not gonna add black to that. And our little round table that Maddie just adored working on. We left that one actually very brown. So, th and that's going in a different room. So, um, and then the one behind me, the big bookcase, that one we kind of did middle of the road so and then we a little more heavily accented the uh, contours and crevices with the black so that just gives you an idea of you know you can use these same colors and get really different looks just by the way you apply and how heavily you go on each step and then that paper towel just spreads it out just enough now listen you could also do a much more rustic look by not going over it with that paper towel for this, I'm using a chip brush just because it's got the little feathery edges and I like how that does better on something that I'm not trying to, you know, put a whole lot on. Um, I just don't want it to look very solid. So because it's wispy like that, I can get more of the look that I am going for. That's the fun part about this. I mean, you know, any level of creativity will, will work. It's amazing. You can go as little or as far as you want and it all looks good it's just according to your taste here's the last thing I wanted to show you with the black wax so this is the piece with the little crevices you can see I've already accented it but I just want to show you how so I am look at this I'm going 
I mean like the front view of this is so amazing when you just take the side of your brush okay and then I'm gonna take the side and just go this way so you're trying to really concentrate and this is what gives you that look of like it naturally aged there you go and then you know if this was a bigger piece you could just add a little more here or even if it wasn't there you go it just looks framed out finished off and then here you go right here look at this look at what this does to these edges amazing it gives it so much drama and detail it's a little too much for my taste and then here these crevices right here you really want to accent these and what this is is it's shadowing so it's going to push this back visually and you're going to these recesses are going to feel deeper so it's going to be more contoured and more framed and finished so there you go i hope that helps We really hope you've enjoyed this Designaholic DIY. I'm Carrie Lawless. I'm Kayla. I'm Maddie. And we are Designaholics. Make sure to subscribe, ring the bell for notifications because we've got more great content coming up for you. We are!